this is going to be the first part of a multi-part tutorial on how to use the online subsystem via C++ with Unreal Engine. So in this video specifically, we're going to be just simply setting up our project, which should only take a couple of minutes. The part two should be covering how to create a session and travel to the level once it's finished creating, as well as it's going to be pretty much the base for how everything's going to work. Part three is going to be how to find sessions. So we're going to be searching through all of our sessions and printing out what we find. And part four is going to be joining the session if it is found. So what we're going to do after that will probably be small miscellaneous stuff, if anything at all, such as creating a, like a simple widget browser, for example, to see servers. But we, we may get to that. I'm not sure if that's going to be worth creating since there's other tutorials that show how to do this via Blueprint, which I don't think it's going to be that difficult. Anyways, we can go ahead and get started with our project setup. So uh, just pretend I'm on the first person map. So this is a, the first person project. I've done a couple little things to it already, just unrelated to this, such as our guy being replicated. So as you can see, I'm just small crap. So what we need to do first off is set it to use the plugin for the uh, online subsystem. So we go to settings, plugins, search for online. I've already done this because I don't want to restart. You'll see online subsystem. You want to enable it. And then down here, click restart editor. Once that is done, we go to our project folder. I'm gonna go to config. We're going to go to Default Engine. And once we're in here, we're going to go down to the very bottom. And I will leave this in the description for you to copy and paste. We're going to paste all this crap. So we're setting our net driver. Then the platform service that we're set to use right now is going to be set to null. That will be changed to Steam once we actually get our setup working and we want to test via Steam. Then just to set up our Steam info, we use the app ID 480. That is just simply because we're testing via Space Wars, which is an open app ID for pretty much anyone to test with. So just enabling it, obviously you can kind of see what everything is doing. And then just finishing the setup here. I don't exactly know what this is doing, but anyways, we're gonna go ahead and save. Now in our Visual Studio project, we need to go to our FPS well, project name dot build dot cs. We need to add some dependencies. So I have those to copy as well. It's going to be the online subsystem and the online subsystem Steam. So after your last one, you're going to do online subsystem and whoops, online subsystem Steam, just like so, and Control S to save then close it. And I think that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and build, make sure we're good to go. No actual errors. Just let it do its thing. All right, we're good to go. Then we need to set up our game instance class. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a new section, new C++ class. This one's going to be of game instance. And I want to call this one tutorial game instance. Now in my case, I'm just having public selected. So we have our headers as public and our CPP as private, like so. And I want to put it in a new folder. I'm going to call this one tutorial. Yep. Then I'm going to hit create class and wait for this to finish. Then we're going to correct our header because this is on version 4.24 something. So as you can see, it failed. So we have tutorial game instance in the CPP. We need to change the include for the CPP. So it's going to be our project name, which in my case, it is FPS feature test. Then we go to public tutorial, tutorial game instance.h. Now I want to make a quick constructor. And 
and then we are going to make the function or we're going to override the function that is going to be handling everything which is our function called init so it's going to be virtual void because it's a virtual function init and we need to override it let's create its definition like so that we have it here then we need to make two more includes so we're going to include the online subsystem and include the online oh, I need a capital I for some reason online session settings dot h now if you have red squiggly lines under the includes I'm saying like you can't find this and stuff like that what you need to do is go ahead and close down your Visual Studio project find your actual U project right click on it generate Visual Studio project files wait for that to finish and reopen your Visual Studio project and once you do you should be able to come back and those errors should be gone keyword should so I'm gonna go ahead and compile and make sure we're good to go if so yep I will be concluding the video here so this is where we stop and what we've done so far actually no there's we're gonna do some more real quick my apologies so I created a new folder I called it tutorial we're gonna need a couple of things in here one we need our own level for a main menu so I'm gonna create a new level call this one tutorial main menu we want to create a new game mode for that level so blueprint class game mode base tutorial game mode or main menu game mode I'm going to index it with BP for blueprint we need a pawn so we're going to create a new pawn so it's going to be BP underscore tutorial main menu pawn and we need a widget for our menu so user interface widget blueprint call this one tutorial main menu widget like so now let's open our main menu level and we need to set it to use this game mode so we're going to go to settings world settings game mode override we're going to select bp tutorial main menu game mode and save it now we need to set inside the game mode it to use our new pawn so find default pawn class we're going to select bp tutorial main menu pawn you haven't been able to tell i've already done this kind of already but i figured i'd just make a tutorial on it since i haven't seen much in terms of how to do it via c plus plus which is why i have this other game instance already pretty much gone <laughs> And then the other thing we need to do, we need to set it to use our tutorial game instance. So we go to settings, project settings, maps and modes. One thing we're going to set is the game default map to tutorial main menu and our game instance class to be tutorial game instance. I don't know what happened to you, editor startup. I'm just going to leave you as first person example. So once that's done, save all. You can ignore the editor startup. That's just for me. So now we have our blueprint class set up. We're setting the level up to use it. It's our default level. We have our temporary pawn, which just has nothing. It's just there for us. Okay. Now we can make the quick blue or the quick widget. So what we're gonna do is just gonna have two buttons. So we're gonna drag out a button and text in that button. I'm going to set the text on this one to create server. Give it a space. Then the button, I want to give it a variable name, b underscore create server. And I want to anchor this to the center. And give it a size. I want to resize this to cover it. Like so. Let's round these values down I want to do 230 and 60 all right now I want it to be kind of over in this area here and the other one in this area 
So what I'm going to do is I want to take, all right, so let's see, what is twice a 230? That would be 460, so negative 460. Then what is half of 60? That's 30, so negative 30. Then I'm going to copy the button and free paste it in the Canvas panel. This one's going to be called B underscore join server. Change the name to join server. And we're going to move it over in here. So let's see. We can go over by 230. And we can go up by negative 30 again to keep it level. Now we have our buttons. All right, good to go there. Now we need to set it up to use it. So what we're going to do is go to blueprints, level blueprint. And here's where we're going to do kind of all of our crap. So I'm going to move it vent tick. And this is where we set our cursor to be shown, our input mode to be UI, as well as we bring up our menu widget. So I'm going to do create widget. We're going to add it to the viewport. We're going to set the class to be tutorial main menu widget. Just like so. Then we're going to do get player controller. Index zero because it's us. Then what we're going to do is get the um, we do show mouse cursor. We're going to set that to true and link it up. Then we're going to do set input mode to UI only, just like so. All right, compile, save, and hit play. I can click the buttons, my mouse is there and everything, so we're good to go. Now let's go back to our widget real quick, click on create server. We're going to add an on clicked event, then we're going to do the same thing for join server. Add an on click event, so now we have on click, or on create server, and on join server clicked. The very last thing we're going to do in this video, I think, is we're going to set a reference to our game instance. So that way we have just easy access to it. So I'm going to remove our on tick and pre construct. I'm going to do get game instance. I'm going to cast it to tutorial game instance. And if it's valid, I want to set it, but I also want to store it. So I'm going to create a new variable, call it game instance. The type is going to be tutorial game instance by object reference. And if it's successful, we're going to set it. So then we're going to get game instance, do a valid check. If it's valid, then we're going to call some functions. Not right now, but we had to create those functions. So from here, we can drag off and do whatever we want once we create our blueprint callable functions in our game instance. All right, so that should be everything for now. I'm going to close our main menu widget. I mean, blue millable. So what we've done is we've created our main menu level, the pawn for that menu, as well as the game mode. Now I'm just using blueprint classes because there's nothing running on them. It doesn't matter, like literally. So to save effort, just blueprint. There's no point in really doing C++ honestly in this case. Then we create our menu widget, which simply has two buttons with on fired events, as well as we create our game mode, I mean our game instance, and created the override for our init function. And the init runs, it's kind of like the begin play, but for our game instance. And this is where we kind of set everything up because we know everything's been, it's already good to go. Uh, we had to set the plugin to use the online subsystem. We had to set our default engine.ini to be set up to use our Steam, well, in this case, our null subsystem. We're not using Steam just yet. And we had to modify our build.cs for the required dependencies of online subsystem and online subsystem Steam. So now that that is all done, I will see you in the next video where we go through and we actually create a session. So I will see you then.